Hello everyone, with uh, April Fool's Day coming up there very soon, I thought I'd share with you my favourite fool story, my favourite story in which someone pulls the wool over somebody's eyes as they say and it, well, it goes a little bit like this. Mick and Moira McConnell had spent the entirety of their lives living in the small parish of Ballancolig in County Cork. They were getting on in years and now as they found themselves in the late autumn of their lives they were also poverty stricken down to their last cow which is a very tough situation for any dairy farmer to find themselves in. They sat down that evening in the light of a dim candle and they agreed that they would sell the cow the following day at market so that they would have enough to eat for the winter. Mick began the long walk, or it was a long walk in those days, into Cork City very early in the morning. He stopped at a hill which is today known as Bottle Hill. He ate his meagre crumbs of bread, he drank his cold bottle of tea. But just before he was about to leave, there emerged from out behind one of the rocks a tiny, beautifully dressed little man with bright red bristly hair saying, Mick McConnell, give to me your last cow and I will give you something that will change your life. I will give you this magic bottle. Now Mick was as sceptical as, as you or I would be. Here is this suspicious little man offering him a magic cow for the last thing he owns in the whole world. But there was something in the way the little man held himself, something in his confidence and assurance, the twinkle in his eye. Maybe it was a little bit of magic. But Mick handed over the cow and ran home to Moira with the instructions for how to use the magic bottle. When Moira saw that her husband had given away the cow for a magic bottle, well, she went blue in the face with rage. She began to beat her husband around the back of the head, saying, Mick McConnell, what were you thinking? Oh, Myra, my dear heart, trust me, I know what I'm doing. He placed the magic bottle on the table. He said the magic words, Bottle, do your duty. And there emerged from out the lip of the bottle hundreds of tiny, beautifully dressed fairies that went about the house changing everything. Their coarse linen they transformed into the most beautiful silk, their broken crockery into plates of gold and crystal goblets. By the time the beautiful fairies were finished, Mick and Moira were the wealthiest people in the whole of Cork County. But this kind of wealth always attracts attention. And before too long, the landlord called round to see how they'd done it. He went about the house like he owned the place. I suppose he did. He went into their bedroom. He opened the wardrobe, all of the chests of drawers. But he couldn't figure out how they'd done it. So giving up, he says, Mick, give to me the secret of your success. And I will give you the house and the land on which it sits. Now they say my generation will never own our ho own home. Maybe it's true, but there's something in men in particular. We take a real pride in owning our own home and the land on which we work. This will never change. So as strange as it might seem to you, Mick handed over the magic bottle, so that he could own his own home. But almost immediately after the landlord had left, Mick and Moira were beset by scammers. It seemed like everybody in the parish had a problem that only they could fix with their money. And Mick and Moira were very generous people. They were constantly giving away the things that they owned. Before too long, though, they were once again poverty-stricken, down to their last cow. 
They sat down that evening in the light of a dim candle, and they agreed to sell the cow at market so that they would have enough to eat for the winter. Mick began the long walk into Cork City at the same time he had done on that fateful day. He stopped on the same hill at the same time, ate his meagre crumbs of bread in the same way, drank his cold bottle of tea. He was just about to give up, to leave, when sure enough, there emerged from out behind the rock the tiny, beautiful, dressed man, saying, Make McConnell, give to me your last cow, and I will give you something that will change your life. I will give you this magic bottle. Mick quickly handed over the cow. He snatched the bottle from the little man's hand and ran home to Moira. They got out their coarse linen, their broken plates, ready to be transformed by the beautiful fairies. They said the magic words together. Bottle, do your duty. But instead of beautiful fairies, there emerged from out the lip of the bottle hideous creatures that went about the house breaking everything. When they were done with the house, they then began to beat Mick and Moira black and blue in their old age. Now the couple are down on the floor. They don't see how things can get any worse. And here, at their lowest ebb, Mick hatches a plan. He takes the second bottle to the landlord. Now the landlord was throwing a great big party for all of his friends and well-wishers. He was receiving them like he was the King of Ireland, seated on a golden throne. Your Honour, sir, said Mick, I have a second bottle. It's better than the first. Now the landlord knew immediately that Mick was trying to trick her to fool him. But he thought that this must be just an ordinary bottle. What were the chances you'd get two? And so he decided to play along for the entertainment of his guests. The party guests take the bottle from Mick. And they bring it over to the fine mahogany table. They gather around it, ready to laugh in the face of this poor old man. They say the magic words. Bottle, do your duty. And sure enough, there emerged from out the lip of the bottle the hideous creatures that went about the manor house, breaking everything. The antique paintings they tore asunder, they broke apart the ancient furniture. When they were done with the house, the hideous creatures then began to beat all of the guests, black and blue. Now everybody is down the floor, shielding themselves from the blows from the hideous creatures. But Mick is moving as fast as he can along the floor on all fours. He sees the first bottle up on the mantelpiece. He grabs it and runs. But as he's leaving, he grabs the second bottle as well, in case anyone should call for the first. He takes the two bottles home to Moira. They say the magic words, and once again become the wealthiest people in the whole of Cork County. I want you to picture that elderly couple together at last in their fine four poster bed, gazing at one another with the love light in their eyes and remembering all of their happy memories together. When suddenly they realize they have forgotten how to tell which bottle is which. Mick then placed the two bottles on the shelf behind his favourite chair and passed the bottles down through his descendants. The bottles still stand on a shelf in Cork County. It's in a pub now, though, naturally. 
To this day, nobody knows which bottle is which. And everybody is too afraid to try. Maybe this April Fool's the most important uh, uh, bottle won't be a magic bottle given to you by a leprechaun. It'll be a bottle like this, some uh, hand sanitizer, because it's important you do your bit uh, in this trying time. Wash your hands and look after one another. I hope you're all well and that you aren't all going stir crazy from being locked inside. <laughs> Take a walk. It's sunny out there. It's beautiful. Look after one another. Thanks for listening.